Our next speaker this evening for presenting for why atheism best accounts for reality is Emeritus Professor Robert Nola of the University of Auckland. Robert Nola has taught philosophy at this university for 47 years. He has taught and published in philosophy of science, metaphysics and epistemology. He is an honorary associate of the New Zealand Associate of Rationalists and Humanists alongside other distinguished associates such as Richard Dawkins, Dan Kath Tizard and University of Auckland Professor Ray Bradley. Professor Nola's research interests consist of philosophy of science, metaphysics, naturalism, atheism, science and religion, epistemology, and selected areas in social and historical studies of science. We had to stop there. Please welcome Emeritus Professor Robert Nola. Here's the title that we were given to discuss, um, Atheism or Christianity, which best accounts for reality? And what I'll try to do is to reject aspects of this question and pose something more sharp. But what I want to do is dedicate this talk to Ahmed al Shamri, a Saudi Arabian currently under death sentence for atheism and apostasy. Uh, his defense entered a plea of insanity, but he lost it in the courts. Uh, you might get off uh, this charge, perhaps, of being an atheist if you were thought to be insane. Um, New Zealand also has an anti-blasphemy law. I think we need to get rid of it. Total failure in the parliament today to actually do that. So stick with this business of trying to get rid of this blasphemy law. Right, well, problems on the title question. It's too parochial. It mentions just one religion. What of Buddhism as a better explainer concerning the control of our desires. Now I think Buddhism is pretty good at this. It explains how our desires come about, how they can overwhelm us in our lives, and how we can try to control them. And I think it does a much better job than Christianity. So one objection is that um, this uh, title takes no account of other religions. <clears throat> it's too narrow, is the second point. It omits mention of all our various sciences that they've explained us. Now, I'm going to use the word scientific naturalism, not in the sense that the previous speaker did, but just to mean our totality of all the sciences put together. And you'll pick out your explanation as required according to the various, according to the particular science. What I, amongst the sciences, I want to include something that's developed the last 20 or 30 years called cognitive science of religion. And really what it intends to do is explain why people believe in religion. What's going on inside your brain when you do the believing? It doesn't have to be a god at all. Now this scientific naturalism I want to talk about, the totality of all the planetary sciences, is to be contrasted with what I call supernaturalism, and I abbreviate that as supernat. You've got to have God in there as an explainer. Christianity uh, is a collection of sects. That's my third point. Which of these different sects of Christianity give a better account? Catholicism actually approves of the theory of evolution. Most Protestant sects do not. So which bit of Christianity are we to pick here? Fourthly, the question is kind of mistaken about atheism, because I think atheism doesn't explain anything. What am I doing here then? Um, <laughs> atheism simply means God does not exist. It's merely a claim about me what doesn't exist. When you want to get adequate explanations, you've got to adopt what I call scientific <coughs> naturalism. And scientific naturalism, the collection of all our sciences, is simply neutral about religion. It says nothing. So we can have a strong thesis, um, add to scientific naturalism the claim that God does not exist, let's call that A, or adopt a weaker thesis, um, take all the natural sciences together, or take, take all the sciences together, but you don't need the God hypothesis at all, and I indicate that by minus G. So scientific naturalism plus A, or scientific, scientific naturalism minus G. <coughs> More problems with the title of Christian. Now this really gets into philosophy. What do we mean by uh, giving a better account of? What is it to offer the best explanation? Well, I'm going to adopt a theory that is around uh, in, in philosophy. I'm going to say, let's take the following uh, considerations. There are, just stand for any bit of reality, whatever that you want to explain. Why Saturn has rings, for example. <clears throat> and we've got two rival theories, A for atheism, G for the God theory. 
and we're going to ask which makes are most likely. And I've got some probabilities here, and I'm going to talk about the probability of uh, that bit of reality given God, and suppose it's say five percent, and the probability of that bit of reality given atheism, suppose it's ninety-seven percent. And what the law of likelihood says is that R is going to show you that A over G. The probability of R given A is greater than the probability of R given G. And we're going to use this as a premise in an argument called inference to the best explanation. We can start off with some facts, and you've got one of these probability relationships, or better to call them likelihood relationships, and then uh, you proceed from that point. Even more problems with the type of question. Uh, and this is one that exercised me because I haven't got an answer about it. What makes Christianity superior to all the other religions as an explainer? Now, take the three standard monotheisms, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. They all have roughly the same sort of God associated with them. Which, what, what makes Christianity the better explainer than Judaism or monotheism? I haven't heard an answer yet. <coughs> reality, what do I mean by reality? <coughs> well, I'm not going to give you a definition. I'm going to just give you some examples. And reality is simply going to be any, any of the things you find in the space-time framework. <coughs> like you and me, or having a, having a pain in your back, the flowing tides, the rings of Saturn, money in the bank. Interesting question here is what about mathematical entities like numbers and so on? Uh, do they have a place in the framework or not? Uh, that's a question I'm not going to answer, but it makes uh, talking about a certain kind of naturalism different from the one that I'm talking about. It's slightly difficult. Now, science explains some bit of reality, but it may not explain all bits of reality. I mean, science is not a complete business. So what we need to look at is what kind of explanations we get without making any assumptions about God. <coughs> Now, um, one of my favorite Catholics, Father George Coyne, Coyne, who was a Jesuit priest, a scientist, and a cosmologist. And he was an advisor to Pope John II, but after Pope John II, he disappeared and probably was dropped by Benedict XVI. I advise you to look at a YouTube interview with Richard Dawkins, in which Coyne tells us that God does not explain anything. And uh, that's my stance, of course. Um, so I agree with him. And to give you a few quotes from him, he's speaking about Stephen Hawking, and he says, Stephen Hawking's concept of God is that God is something we need to explain parts of the universe that, that we don't understand. I tell him, Stephen, I'm sorry, but God is the God of love. He's not a being I haul in to explain things when I can't explain them myself. And then he goes on elsewhere. I've been a vocal opponent of intelligent design. It's not science, although it pretends to be. So he's putting down the intelligent design people. But what's interesting here is that he doesn't think God can explain anything. Uh, he's got this view that God is love. <clears throat> now, for coin then, God is not explanatory. There's no God of the gaps. So coin is really on my side of the debate. Except we're not totally on my on this side, because I don't believe in this God of love stuff. I'm all in favor of love, but not necessarily God. So for coin, putting it in my probabilistic terms, the probability of any bit of realism given, given supernaturalism is simply zero. Now here I've got a slightly complex table, and I want to <coughs> look at any example of a bit of reality that you might consider and ask whether scientific naturalism, whether without atheism, or the minus God position, how it might do compared with, compared with supernaturalism. And there are these four different positions I've got here. So let us suppose, yes, science is <coughs> explaining, but no, supernaturalism doesn't. Like, if you go example, is the flow of the tides. But I think all our science, all our current sciences are like this. God doesn't appear in any of them. You won't find any scientific paper in which someone, someone at some point, the, the writer says, God did it. Uh, Completely different reasons I looked at. Well, um, a second one you might like to look at is this. Earlier on, perhaps there was um, a supernaturalistic explanation, but later a naturalistic one emerged around the other way. Well, Isaac Newton is a good example of this. He couldn't solve the problem once he set up his theory of how the planets move. Um, 
he couldn't solve the problem of uh, the stability of the planets. Uh, and he said, well, perhaps some reformation will occur up in the heavens about this. Well, Laplace, the person who showed us in some ways how he might solve this problem, and it was a it was a class that actually said, I have no need of the God hypothesis in doing any of this. Now, other cases of scientific naturalism, uh, well, other examples of bits of reality that scientific naturalism doesn't explain, but God does. I think that's <coughs> none whatsoever. And then other cases of bits of reality that scientific naturalism doesn't explain and religion doesn't. Yes, there are stats of those. Science is not a complete business. And finally, the fourth possibility is the scientific naturalism uh, and scientific supernaturalism both explain the same thing. I don't think there are any cases of that. Well, one of the things I want to get onto now is just to say a little bit about the problem of evil. Because part of reality is pain and suffering. So how does religion deal with this? I don't think it does it very well at all. But to give you some examples, in, in the literature, uh, philosophers talk uh, a lot about a newly born fawn that is caught in a forest fire and has an agonizing death, pointless death. <clears throat> Second example is Huntington's disease. Some of you may know about this. Huntington's disease concerns the death of brain cells, and it usually occurs uh, from middle age onwards. Its symptoms are mood changes, loss of mental abilities, jerky body movements, lack of coordination, inability to talk and speak, and a decline into dementia. And it's a genetic disease. If, if one of your parents has it, you've got a 50% chance of getting it. <coughs> Death doesn't, isn't caused by HD, it's not known um, what, what cure is for it. Well, in 1993, it was discovered that in chromosome 4, the gene for HD exists uh, right at the tip. And <clears throat> it's a really a sequence of CAG repeats, cytosine, adenine, guanine, up to 35 repeats. So we've all got this, but those who get having the disease have got more repeats than this. Now it's not known uh, why these repeats occur, and it's not known how the defective gene affects the brain cells. But it's a great disease. A lot of interesting research on it. Now, Ask yourself about God who you consume is powerful, all knowing, and all good. A PKG God uh, is God the maker of the genes. Um, maybe some of the religious people won't believe that. So God is a maker of defective genes. Could an all powerful God simply tweak the gene at the tip of the chromosome and stop HD? Well, he could. And here's my argument if a all powerful God exists, He's powers to tweak the gene. If he does exist, he's ignorant to the HD gene and to the text. And if God does exist, he's malevolent in letting people suffer when he could stop it. So the conclusion is there is no all powerful God, or if there is a God who's not powerful, God will know he's not good. So this must be the end of my talk on this. I read all the bells. <coughs> uh, a few more things to say about this defense, or, 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 about this position to do with pain and suffering, but I don't think religion has any answers to this. Thank you.